to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. So if I believe that in Christ, healing is possible, there is an empowerment that comes based on that consciousness. Are we together? If I believe that it is true, God prospers, there is an empowerment. The assignment of that empowerment is to bring you into the experience of what you have believed. Listen carefully. The assignment of that empowerment that we call grace, grace as an enablement, grace as help, grace as empowerment has the assignment to bring you into the experience of the things you have believed so if i believe that god is a lifter is it true from scripture yes has he lifted people from scripture yes by having that consciousness that god is a lifter the grace for lifting comes to my life in honor it comes to honor the fact that I believe that dimension of God. And let me tell you this, when that empowerment comes, because grace can teach, it begins to open me up to the participatory dynamics that make for lifting. So I find myself operating at a frequency of wisdom that mere human beings would not be able to have. The wisdom emanates from that empowerment. If I believe that God can make ordinary men powerful. I believe that because it is true from scripture. That grace, that anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon me and I'm able to prove it here and now with my life that God empowers people. So I can speak to someone and say by tomorrow, return lifted and the person just leaves believing that it was just a word that came on him. And by the next day, that word that came on him will start drawing destiny helpers, will start making him act in a certain way until prophecy comes to pass. It's called the enabling grace. Are we together now? If I pray for you and I say in the name of Jesus, the prophetic or apostolic or pastoral calling upon your life, let it be fanned to flames. If you believe what I have said, the grace that empowers you will come on you. It is that grace that will start planting an appetite for prayer. Because in any case, without prayer, you will not grow. In any case, without word study, you will not grow. But the empowerment to do it does not come from you. The will to do it and the discipline to do it comes from you. But the empowerment to do six hours, three hours is not your strength. Are we learning? So, look up. It is true that the grace of God looks like you are not doing anything. But that is not entirely true. The grace of God grants you salvation so that you are in Christ. That becomes your legitimate ground for receiving every other thing. The moment the saving grace is administered to you, what is the assignment of the saving grace? It helps you believe the gospel. Without the saving grace at work in your life, you cannot believe the gospel. The saving grace helps you to, to believe the gospel. And then it is responsible for the impartation of Zoe, God's life. From that time onwards, the level of grace that is at work in you is called the enabling grace. The grace that empowers you. The energy is supernatural, but the doing is still you. So, I pick up my Bible by the Spirit of God and I begin to study. Ordinarily, I should not find anything. 
ordinarily speaking i should not see anything that culminates to revelation except that i'm not just reading it in the flesh what does it mean to read in the flesh by your efforts only engaging your sensory perceptions now whilst i'm reading the holy ghost you see that now he comes and breathes upon me by that grace he has given me and suddenly i just turn to a scripture i just feel like going online to type something and you find one scripture then you see a 19 minute message or a 21 minute message you had no business going there but there was a grace it was responding to your participatory you see that now you were participating with that grace that 19 minutes vi video leads you to a link leads you to a website now you have found truth and you kneel down there crying how did these people know that this is what i was looking for grace God knows that the call upon your life will require stretching and mentorship and discipline. And so whilst you are praying and say, God, show me mercy, all of a sudden you feel led to go to the market. But why should I go to the market after the rain? Whilst you are in that market, then you will see a poster. That poster leads you to a crusade that leads you to a church that leads you to the answer to your prayer. That is grace. It was grace moving you all the way. But you cooperated with that grace. That's why you are seeing the potential. You would have ignored it and the grace will still remain there. Listen, did you know in 2 Kings chapter 4, the oil had the ability to solve that woman's problem but the oil could not multiply itself on its own there was something she had to do to release the potential of that oil what was her assignment increase the vessel when she came to the prophet the prophet said you are a prophet's wife no this is not how god works you are sure you are a prophet's wife yes sir my husband is late he said no there must be something in your house what do you have? Said nothing. He said no. Check. I said, oh, oil. And the oil was listening to the conversation. And said, for years I have been here. You don't know what would have happened to your life. You never would have tasted of poverty if you had recognized that I am here waiting for your participation. As soon as the prophet gave her counsel, he said, I know where the problem is. You have been waiting for the oil to find its way to fill vessels. You go and borrow vessel. Don't borrow oil, but go and borrow vessel. Whatever it will take you, you can plead with your neighbor. Help me. Don't be ashamed. Go and outsource these things. And when she came, listen carefully. Listen. He said, now that you have it, shut your door and begin to pour. And the oil said, now that you have done your part, watch and see that this was no ordinary oil so god gives you your finances and in your dreams you're having visions of you thriving and yet you are going down because the grace has been waiting but there is no knowledge to know what to do with that grace you see that faith is not acting faith is acting based on the conditions tied to the promise there is always a condition you don't choose what to do you find out what you are supposed to do deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord the bible says to observe and to do all his commandments which i command you this day it says that the lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth every time god speaks the grace to make what he said come to pass starts hovering around the vicinity where that word was spoken but the grace keeps waiting there who can believe that word and find out the condition that makes for the activation of that grace listen when it was time for jesus to come upon the earth there was an engracing that came by the holy spirit waiting for that virgin in this case mary if mary refused and said thank you for all this your story uh, gabriel go back to heaven and tell god i'm not stupid he would have respected her will and the word alongside the grace would have looked for another person 
but here's what Mary said be it unto me according to your word the moment that happened the grace called the power of the highest that overshadows how shall these things be she asked an honest question I'm willing to cooperate but can a woman give birth without a man and Gabriel said leave the rest just understand your own part is your own part is to agree God is not a demon he will not force a baby inside your womb and she said be it unto me the same way I hope you know that she had a responsibility of carrying that baby for nine months and can I tell you honestly I believe that she went through the normal things women go through when they are pregnant don't you think she was smiling every day carrying a heavy Jesus no there were times she felt this Jesus I they told me you are the king of kings you are inside my stomach I am tired but her will kept playing the role when it was time she would have refused and say you are not coming out you will know now that you are inside my stomach she had to cooperate now I, I, we, are we together now yes why didn't Jesus just jump out one morning and say thank you I was only waiting to be nine months he had to subscribe to the process of delivery when she gave birth why am I teaching you this please place value on what I'm teaching you by the privilege of God's grace this man standing before you I'm not in ignorance over what I'm saying I understand this thing many believers continue to live defeated lives in this kingdom because they do not understand the character of this enabling grace the effort the empowerment does not come from you but the action of obedience comes from you and until that action is taken the grace remains futile so God speaks to you and tells you you are going to be a CEO you will build a foundation that will go around the globe the moment you believe him listen carefully the grace starts hanging around your vicinity but it doesn't mean anything is built you will keep seeing visions till you get old if you remain like that the day you now say listen the day you now say I believe let me start making efforts let me go and buy a book on building a business you are now cooperating with that grace a book that ordinarily you shouldn't have understood he will empower your mind and you will start understanding and whilst you are reading you will find a phone number you will come for koinonia like this and that grace will shift you to sit down near somebody who has a foundation And then you will see something written so 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 foundation and you say wow this is amazing you run a foundation you say i've been running this for 26 years and the holy spirit will say you see now that is the person i wanted you to come to meet now you partner with that person watch grace at work and the person says okay i will call someone in uk to help you a connection is coming it is not your wisdom that's why at the end of it when you stand in front of that edifice if they ask you how did it happen you will say grace because the dynamics but I'm telling you if you sat down at home there you will be very surprised that that grace will not work look at me there are many many people who have not taken advantage of this grace there are many men and women of God who want to rise to positions of influence. They want to be great. They want to carry power. But they just say, in Jesus' name, I won't be small. And they are surprised that they remain small as if God did not hear them. Let me tell you what the problem is. Here is the problem. You do not understand that this grace is activated through knowledge that leads to obedience and it is at the point of your obedience that the potential of that grace is released. It is at the point of obedience. Listen to me. Faith is not saying what God has said. Faith is doing what God has said. You can start by saying homologio. 
confession repeat as you have heard but it should not stop there so come Dave God tells this man I want to lift you as a worshiper and take you to the nations of the earth whether it comes by prophecy or it comes by a scripture that is found he can decide to say God you have given me a word I'm going to the nations and he will sit down there the day he goes to get a guitar or a keyboard he is now participating with that grace are you seeing now you go to the market as you are saving heaven is watching you he buys a guitar whether he can play it or not buys a keyboard and the moment you do that you have shown God that you are interested he will now lead you to the person who will teach you you see you see him walking with you I believe that God has called me to serve his purposes in the capacity that I serve and I thank God for it but sitting down to fold my arms and say the grace of God is at work in my life I will be surprised till tomorrow let me show you a scripture <sighs> grant us grace O oh Lord grant us grace grant us wisdom 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. I want us to read it as loud as we can when we see it. 1 Corinthians 15, media help us, verse 10. Everyone, please read if you are a child of God and you believe in Jesus. Ready? One to read. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Stop. 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 How do we become in this kingdom? By the grace of God for by the grace of God I am this politician that I am for by the grace of God I am this man of God that I am by the grace of God I am this CEO this billionaire by the grace of God I am this that I am but here is this he says and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain stop hmm. So we're, we're examining three things now. The first is that the summary is that it is grace. But hey, so that you don't carry this confusion, hold on. Let me explain to you. That grace can be wasted. Let me show you how to waste it. To sit down and fold your arms, believing that everything is all right. It's called making the grace of God. Please keep the scripture there in vain. How did I maximize that grace? Next expression. Everyone read. One to read. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Stop. Don't rush. Don't rush. So number one, I am what I am by the grace of God. Number two, the grace came upon me, but the grace did not meet ignorance. The grace met me laboring. The labor dimension of faith the grace met me looking around for a shop the grace met me learning how to start the business the grace came upon me and i did not sit down you are going to start a school the grace met me going around abuja and understudying schools as proof that i believe what god said god told me i will become a grace man of god the grace met you going to men of God who represent your future and listening and learning it says I labored more than you all the higher the tenacity of your participatory corporation the higher the grace walks and speaks in your life grace is not a license for laziness hear me believers grace is not a license for laziness grace is a system of advantage that we labor circumspectly because we are empowered by the spirit it takes effort to pray it takes effort to study the word it takes the audacity of faith to remain in the presence of failure and continue because god said so 
the bible says when you find yourself participating that way then grace can speak for you are we together grace it says yet not i but the grace of god that means it was not by my energy in as much as you found me as paul praying in as much as you found me studying in as much as you found me preaching the gospel regardless the persecution there was an energizing within me that was more than me brothers and sisters please hear me i beg you and i beseech you in the name of jesus the son of the living god to understand what i'm teaching you otherwise your christian experience will be so frustrated apostle ah god has shown you grace you are right but please explain to me what you mean if you mean that i sat down quietly grace does not work like that the grace that saves is loitering around here but there are people if you die now without jesus you are going straight to hell bishop david Oedeko will say any christianity that makes god absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible christianity there must always be something now let me tell you what it means to walk in the flesh to walk in the flesh means to depend on your effort to walk in the flesh means to believe that it is absolutely because of what you have done you do not need god it is because of my human connection my wisdom it is because of this uh -uh. the compassion of the father was at the mercy of the sacrifice of jesus if jesus did not endure listen to me when the nails hit the hand of jesus he didn't keep quiet and say finish it let me die i'm the savior he felt the pain let me show you how and met the sacrifice of his son that's what produced grace love and a participatory effort there are many of us looking at me the grace of god keeps hovering around you bringing open doors that an inaccurate spiritual understanding continues to close let me tell you what many of us are doing this illusion that we have one day go better is a slang that we use in nigerian parts of africa to mean one day arbitrarily without any effort or contribution on your own part things will change is a joke joke multiplied god has called me to be a visionary politician obtain grace from god and sit in your office in the night begin to strategize how to rise to that position as you are strategizing the spirit of god is seeing your diligence and the engracing of god is coming to empower you hear me some of you need to politely go back home and call your family and say i now find out why we keep praying and doors keep closing because there is something to do to rise there are people who God will speak to and say tomorrow you'll be a director of an institute there but the director requires you have at least a master's or a PhD or become a professor if you obtain grace and go to school you are participating with that grace to rise to that position of influence it will not come and meet you at that state because that industry requires that degree of qualification so training diligence studies knowledge are all our participatory efforts to make good the grace of god let me submit to you and i say this sincerely by the god of my salvation every night including today as tired as i am when i just returned from lagos you know that i've been to abel kota from abel kota the men's conference four square to lagos and back straight here and after this there will be people to see and after all it doesn't matter what time as a principle and as a discipline i must listen to this message this night myself before i sleep don't covet people's crowns until you find out the sacrifice that those crowns are standing on.
Oh, you are just lucky. It's just God's grace. Business people, hear me. This may be the Holy Spirit speaking to you. I know I will prosper. Oil and gas. I know I will prosper. Banking. God showed me you are right. But believe me, remaining at that state will only frustrate you and bring reproach to your life. These signs shall follow them. Follow means you are moving. Follow means you are taking steps. The grace of God to empower Esther to receive favor was there. But if Esther sat down, she would not find favor with the king. She said, you know what? I need to see this king. My people are about to die. I believe I'm favored. So I'm going to see him. If I perish, I perish. Listen. Now, I'm not encouraging you to be a hustler. That thing we call hustle, blindly trying to make things work. Don't do that. But have you noticed that people who don't give up never end up in shame for some reason? Have you seen people like that? They may not even be very serious believers. As soon as one door closes, they have no time to mourn. They force another one to open. They are losing their job. They grieve for two hours and they are up with their CV again. They have an e-version. They have their bag with the, 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 the CV. Any version you want, they are prepared. There are people like that. Are you into real estate? They will say yes. In two nights, they will read about real estate more than people who have been in it in 10 years because they will not let that opportunity go. Sooner or later, my brothers and sisters, you will be surprised to find out that something will work. I'm not just marketing flesh. I'm teaching you how the grace of God works. Hear me. There are many of you for a long time God has shown you that there are mantles, there are anointings. You've had dreams, you've had visions. Let me see what you are doing as proof that you believe what God showed you. For many of us, this is what we are doing. We are folding our arms. Oh, one day the fathers will die and it will be our turn. What sort of thinking is that? Oh, I know, don't laugh at me. I know one day I will rise. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I know God will prosper me. Show me the books you bought in honor of that word. Show me the uncommon mentors you are pursuing in the area of finances with proven results as proof that you believe you are a kingdom financier. Found out, respectfully speaking, that if the body of Christ does not learn the labor dimension of faith, we will continue to mock ourselves. Jumping at confessions that will indefinitely remain in the realm of the spirit. Not inaccurate. But that lack of balance and completion is where our frustrations lie. Joshua, there is a grace for victory upon you. But it will not be without any effort from you. You are going to go around. You don't have the power to fight. But there must be a token of contribution from you. Get the priests. Go round. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. They won. It's like going around Abuja, I told you. Don't think it was just a small room they went round. Going around Jericho was hard work. They did it for seven days. And he said, now, on the last day that you want to see the biggest blessings, you will do what you have done every day on that day alone, seven times. Now, man, I release a grace upon you for wellness. But go and look for a river. Dirty. Bath there. Now, man was saying, what sort of thing? You are insulting my pedigree. Say, okay, you can remain with your leprosy. But if it is God you want to see cure you, go and bath. Naaman dipped himself once, came out looking like a child playing in mud. He was not healed. Dipped himself again, came out the second time. Even the sixth time, nothing happened. But when he went the seventh time, that grace in the water there. 
and as soon as he came out the bible says his skin was like that of a child what of blind Bartimaeus? what of the man that did beautiful acts chapter 3 i believe the bible says it was the hour of prayer listen very carefully the man was begging for arms peter and john went to pray and then when they saw him what do you want i want arms silver and gold he said i have none but such as i have there is a grace he gave us i give unto you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk the man remained on the ground there don't think he just jumped up no he remained on the ground there verse 7 hear what peter said for as long as you are remaining there this grace would not work let me help you hold my hands and he moved him the bible says and as he lifted him immediately his feet and his ankle bone received strength not when he was sitting at the instance of his participatory role that grace came upon him brothers and sisters please hear me it will never happen sitting down rest does not mean lack of efforts rest means dependence on God God's idea of rest does not mean leaving anything and sitting down there no rest means that your dependence the energizing and the empowerment remember when there were few automatic cars cars that use automatic gear you have to put the manual gear remember from four you come back to three to two one and then four three two one and your hand is almost as if it's removing but now you have an automatic gear system but who holds the steering there is a system that keeps changing gears but you leave the steering and hold your hand and close your eyes and almost immediately you end your life but by holding on to the steering listen to me the advantage of the automatic gear system is to give you more room to focus and to provide convenience so people can drive while they are talking and they are just driving while they are talking it would not be it would not be possible with the manual system just like that this is how grace works grace does not drive the car for you it helps you to engage the gear system so that whilst you hold it and it also empowers you and gives you the strength my brothers and my sisters obtain grace from God today find out what you need to do about your destiny rise up knowing that I have the backing of heaven open fire towards your destiny and in one month you will do more than you have done in 10 years put together then you will come and stand here and when we say how did it happen you will say the grace of God and we will know what you are saying Apostle, I want to be anointed. God who anoints me, I know, is my God. You are right. But that's not how it works. There are keys to the anointing. When you sit down and you are learning and you are studying while others are sleeping, you are maximizing grace. When you are listening to uncommon mentors help you and show you the way it works, you are maximizing grace. Every participatory effort that you put, knowing that I'm not putting this effort in the flesh, I am maximizing grace this is why there are certain people who continue to triumph from one level of victory to the other whereas there are many spectators who sit down and hope that things will happen the grace of God an enabler a divine help if I think I engage my mind but I don't have the power to give myself ideas the grace can bring ideas while my mind like a womb receives them and births them so if you ask me how did the idea come i will say the grace of god but the idea came and manifested because my mind was fruitful to it when god sent me to this city by the grace of god and with every sense of humility 
I knew that his grace and his name was there to back me. But if I sat down, I folded my arms and I know I, I, one day it will happen. Don't worry. You will be blessed. Tomorrow would come and even next tomorrow and nothing would ever happen. But that effort in faith from one step to another step to another step his grace leading you his grace guiding you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you I will seek you in the morning I have learned to walk in your ways for step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.